Greetings, everybody. I'm helping some riders to prepare for a gap CNO trip later this summer, so I thought, why not share that content in a short little video? I'm going to make this in two parts. Part one is a summary of the trail itself, and then part two is going to be some tips that hopefully will make it a more enjoyable experience. I've completed this trail on five separate occasions with several segment rides as well, and it's fair to say I love this trail, and I would really encourage you just to jump in. It never gets old. I'm actually planning on doing this again, hopefully this fall, so maybe I'll see you out there. Obviously, you can travel in either direction, but I'm going to share my comments from west to east. The gap goes 150 miles from Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania to Cumberland, Maryland. The CNO then continues another 187 miles from Cumberland to Washington, D.C. So, starting in Pittsburgh at the beautiful Point State Park, there's a short little urban section that might be slightly confusing. But very shortly after that, maybe just a few miles, you're on a clearly marked paved path that passes through Pittsburgh neighborhoods, progressing towards McKeesport, and then after about 17 miles, the magic really happens at Dead Man's Hollow when the pavement ends and the trail surface begins. Guess what happens at Dead Man's Hollow? I just love that sound under my tires. The flat trail continues through several small towns until you enter Ohio Pile State Park, where the gradual climb really starts to pick up. You hit the top of the Eastern Continental Divide, descend into Cumberland, Maryland, where the flat CNO takes you all the way to Washington, D.C. By the way, there's mile markers on both trails that count down as you head towards the east. Okay, some similarities between the trails. Both are maintained by public and private interests who really do a fantastic job at keeping these trails ready for adventurers like us. Both are almost completely off-road and safe from car traffic. While riding on both, you're never far away from small towns and emergency assistance. I never even lost cell contact on my most recent ride, at least that I know of. There's also a pretty steady stream of other riders if you need help. And it's really hard to get lost. The trail itself is very obvious and well marked. In summary, they're both beautiful, scenic, historic, and unforgettable. Okay, what makes them different? Well, the Gap is primarily a rail trail, while the CNO is a canal towpath. So the Gap generally has wide trails with space to the left and the right of what was once the rail line. The CNO trail is narrower, with the canal or the remnants of the canal on one side and the river on the other. The gap is super smooth, while the CNO in certain parts it's less maintained. Now that's not to discredit it, it's just not as smooth going as the gap. In particular, the section between Cumberland and Hancock can be more rugged, with roots and rocks and bumps. I mean, come on though, it's an adventure, right? During bad weather, the gap is really no problem, whereas the CNO can become really muddy and bring all the challenges that come along with that. Now, having said that, over the past several years, I've seen many sections of the CNO upgraded with better surfaces, and if that continues, then these comments are obviously way off base. Again, I don't mean to dissuade you at all. It's just a different trail, and you should know that. The CNO is almost completely flat where the gap includes a climb to 2,392 feet at the Eastern Continental Divide. If you're traveling eastward, that climb is really gradual, and at times it's imperceptible. Now, if you're traveling west, the climb is still relatively easy, but you climb 1,700 feet in less than 24 miles versus eastward when you cover that same elevation over 126 miles. You can do the math on the grade, but again, both are totally doable. But if hills bother you, you may want to do the trail from Pittsburgh to Washington, D.C. That's up to you. Okay, a couple trail-specific tips. The gap, for those who are brave winter riders, the Big Savage Tunnel near the top of the Continental Divide is closed during the winter months of December through March, basically making a through ride impossible because there's no easy detour on a bike to get around the tunnel. So check trail websites like gaptrail.org or several different Facebook pages where they post the opening status and closing of the tunnel. On my last two rides, crews were repairing and upgrading the trail surface and asked riders to simply walk to the side of the trail. That's a small inconvenience for such a great trail. As of uh, April 2022, there are two fairly significant detours on the CNO. 
According to the National Park Service website, nps.gov, the Paw Paw Tunnel is projected to be repaired by the summer of 2022. The actual tunnel's open, but the path is closed, so that means you can't ride through on the trail. And I'm not going to lie, the detour around the tunnel requires a good bit of pushing both you and your bike up over some steep terrain. It's totally doable, but saves some energy. There's also a major project near McMahon's Mill near the Big Slack Water area that's projected to be finished during the winter of 2022. This detour takes you out on some nearby roads that rejoin the trail. This includes some rolling hills, but nothing too severe. Okay, part two. How about some simple answers to some commonly asked questions? The first, what kind of bike do you need? Well, again, the gap is easy riding on well-maintained surfaces. I've seen people on classic 10 speeds, even riding in the rain. But the CNO, again, is a different story, especially given the possibility for mud. You're going to need wired tires. Personally, I don't think a suspension is needed because it's not that bumpy. And because I've been asked, I've seen more and more e-bikes out on the trail, so I'm assuming that there's sufficient charging around. Okay, parking. There's a lot of parking, but if you're going to do a through ride, I recommend the Amtrak station garages at both endpoints. They're secure, they're conveniently located, especially if you choose to use Amtrak for getting to the start point. The Parking Panda app can save you a lot of money as well, and it'll help you to reserve a space. In terms of DC, this is something to be mindful of. On one trip to DC, there were no spots at the parking garage and a long line of screaming drivers who couldn't find a space. I was glad I had a reservation. If you're doing segments of the trail, check websites like gaptrail.org for parking along the trail. There's plenty of places. So after you've parked or flown into a nearby airport, how do you get to the start? Or how do you get back to the start after you're done? On my very first trip, I took Amtrak to Pittsburgh. It was really easy. The Capital Limited train is equipped with a bike car, so you don't have to break down your bike. On two other trips, I simply rented a car in D.C. and drove to Pittsburgh. As of last year, Avis even had some special rates for one-way trips, which tend to cost more. There are also shuttle services you can contact, but obviously they come at a larger cost. I splurged and used one from Cumberland to Pittsburgh one year. My favorite? I really enjoyed Amtrak. It added to the adventure, and who doesn't enjoy a train ride anyway? I really don't know how to answer how long. I did it in as short as five days and as long as nine. And after the nine days, I still felt like taking longer because there's just so much to see and do on this trail. Many of these small towns have a lot to offer and some have historical significance. For example, Harper's Ferry, that can easily be a half or even a full day side trip. And also, don't forget the time that you may want to spend in Pittsburgh or, or DC at the end or start of your trip. My five-day trip was because I couldn't take more time off of work. It was still an amazing experience, but I definitely felt rushed. And quite frankly, I was more wiped out at the end of each day. Again, your choice. The trail makes accommodations really easy because there's small towns and places to stay throughout the ride, ranging from rustic camping to B&Bs to hotels. There's even free hiker-biker campsites conveniently right on the trail. And I've stayed at these, but again, I'm going to be honest, I've encountered some sketchy folks at these free sites, including someone who aggressively demanded payment as my personal security. When traveling with someone else or in a small group, I wouldn't bat an eye. But when alone, I just don't feel comfortable. With affordable options nearby, even paid camping options, I'd rather sleep in peace. One other note, the B&Bs and hotels are very, very bike friendly. They know the drill after so many bike travelers, and they're ready and willing to help. For example, the Fairfield Inn in Cumberland has a bike station outside their hotel where you can fill your tires, you can wash the grime off of your bike and yourself. Finally, who can do this? Or more importantly, can you do this? Absolutely. This is not a highly technical trail. I've been amazed at how many families I've seen on the trail with smaller kids on their own bikes. And I've seen more seasoned riders, including an 80-year-old last year who passed me like I was just sitting still. If you want to see more and experience more of what the trail offers, please look at some of my other videos I've uploaded on the trails. I've got over six hours of trail video that you can see firsthand, the trail conditions, some of the sights, and some of the other challenges of this little adventure. I hope this has been helpful, but if you still have questions, I'd like to recommend a really fantastic website. 
It's bikecando.com. When I first saw the site, I thought it meant bikecando.com. Maybe it's meant to be both. I don't know who have created this or maintains this site, but it's really amazing. It's a town-by-town -town overview of each mile with food, restaurants, hotels, other services. In one emergency, I used this site to find a nearby bike shop. Super helpful. Thank you, mystery website people. Three other websites to consider, gaptrail.org, thegreatalleghanypassage.com, and canaltrust.org. Also, just buy the book. The trail guide is updated each year. It's got a great section on the history of each part of the trail. And if you got room, I'd recommend slipping this into your panniers. One last plug, the proceeds from this book benefit the trail and the many people surrounding it. So I would really encourage you to think about a small donation to organizations like the Gap Conservancy Fund or the CNO Canal Trust. When I look at the memories I've had over the years, sending a donation that might amount to a night out in the town or some bike accessory, it's just nice to play a small part in maintaining this adventure for others. If you've got other questions, please feel free to leave them in the comments section below. And if you like this channel, please remember to subscribe. Best wishes for a great trip, and I hope to see you out on an adventure sometime soon.